What is the quickest prep for this session? Who is Makath the Crimson? How do you make the dragon fight memorable? That's what we're looking at, and we'll also be looking at it from quickest prep to a more deeper dive. Rise of Tiamat Episode 2, The Sea of Moving Ice Chapter. If you're just loosely using the information in this book to run a game, you go to an iceberg. All the inhabitants are kind of trapped there, but they're still jerks. There's a prisoner come obsessive, jotting down stolen writings, and the players face an adult white dragon inside the belly of the iceberg. The Drake Horn was here, but is no longer. That's all you need to still be on track. But for those of you who want the medium deep dive, Dala Silverhelf says that the Drake Horn was last known to be in the Sea of Moving Ice. No one can pinpoint its present location from just the sound. But Macath the Crimson, a female tiefling, knows the most about the item. She disappeared three years ago trying to find out more information on it. In Waterdeep, the characters are given cold weather clothes and gear. They also climb aboard the vessel Frost Skimmer, which is captained by a human called La Rooster Half-Face. Frostbite has taken care of one side of his face. There's 40 crew on this ship, and none of it really matters. It gets you from Waterdeep to the island. That's about it. Except for a translator who speaks the local dialect. There is a random table for your journey to this arctic wasteland. Giant octopi, mero, polar bear, scrags, ice hunters, and then you sight the island. Use as many as you like or none at all. It's just padding, really. The island is known as Oyavigaton, or the Island of Eternity. You arrive at the low part, climb up a ladder, you're on the plateau. There are already inhabitants there living on the iceberg itself. Dogs start to bark, the whole town is alerted that strangers are here. The chieftain is called Barking Seal. Bone Carver, Orca Heart, is the male village champion. The rest of the village is just faceless filler. Now the dragon inside the iceberg is called Arothator, but the residents on top will say that they think she died about a year ago. And there's bones all over, actually from the dragon's victims. You have to paint an atmosphere of tense hostility. You might tip them off that this is unusual. They're almost never hostile. They are threatened because if people anger the dragon, it's them who will take the punishment. The actual opening to the inner sanctum of the iceberg is inside the village hall, where the players are not allowed to go. The chieftain Barking Seal will say, will allow you to have free roam if your strongest player beats me. Now if they don't, they have to go, which is probably where your players will just kill everybody. Either way, your strongest player fights until at zero hit points or the opponent is. Cure Wounds is cast and you're allowed to go where you want. Afterwards there's a little bit of food given out, it's poisoned. The shaman is the one who does weaken and on the side will say, look, There's a dragon down there, that's where the entrance is. Knock yourself out. The residents speak Ulyuik, and that's why you need the translator, which can slow the game down, so feel free to just remove that stepping stone. It's freezing on this whole environment and inside, so con saves might be made for people who refuse to wear fur. Visibility is hampered by fog, and these are all more hurdles to be judged by the DM. You can actually drop down into the main iceberg in two locations, one in a hut, but the main one from a village hall. There are kobolds down here lighting all the lanterns and keeping things in order. There are ice trolls as defence. Ice toads are the workers come encounters. There's a scriptorium where you find Macath the Crimson and loads of works that were stolen from the Arcane Brotherhood. The dragons made it so Macath cannot send any messages outward. Closer to the dragon's lair, there are scrags, which are basically ice trolls, which can breathe underwater and swim. Because there's a dragon, there's some treasure, which you can swap out for magic items at your leisure. Now, this isn't hub number one for the dragon. This is clearly a a side one, the overflow. So there's not an amazing amount of treasure, but you can tweak that as you see fit. So that's the medium deep dive. If you're still here and you want to go deeper, let's... Let's dig into some actual information. On the journey to the iceberg, a giant octopi can attack. That's quite cinematic. You've got 40 crew to dispense of in a cinematic way. Or you can choose a monster to be fighting the ice hunters from the iceberg and have Captain LaRooster sort of say, well, they seem hostile. They're normally quite timid people if there are any exchanges between the vessels or between the 
ice hunters and the party. It basically comes from a place of fear. Intruders are gonna anger the dragon. So they're sort of like, nothing to see here, turn around and leave. The chieftain and the shaman do all the talking. The big fighting dude is just there for the fight. But they only talk Iluic. So that could be amusing to have to translate. Or you could have them speak pidgin common, like very, very basic. Either way, the players have to earn their way into the iceberg unless they just go on massacre mission. With a DC 15 persuasion check to the shaman, Bone Carver will privately meet with the adventurers and speak the truth of her people's plight. The Ice Toads. Arothator has attracted a number of Ice Toads to help maintain the iceberg and the dragon's many treasures and trophies. The leader is Marfulb. Marfulb is fluent in Draconic, but they won't speak necessarily in front of the players. They play dumb, but they are quite intelligent. Inside the iceberg, there's lots of slipping down. It's easy to slip down, but you kind of have to pit on and rope climb up. That's the idea. Hard to traverse. Going in, not so difficult. Getting back up chutes of ice, difficult. The random encounters, let's have a quick look. Kobolds. 3d6 kobolds passing through an area as they go around the iceberg. They can be fooled by disguises, but if that goes wrong, 3d6 kobolds and a fight. Disguises are ineffective against ice toads. They work for the dragon but have no special devotion. Their loyalty goes to whomever they expect to win the fight. Ice trolls have bluish skin and are immune to cold damage. The map is coloured in different layers of temperature. The more that you go down and down and down, the colder it gets. More constitution saves just to make it tricky for the characters they're trying to fight a dragon and are different levels of exhaustion. As you walk around, encased in the ice walls are even dra- giants that the dragon has bested and frozen with its frost breath. Ex- describe vistas of people mid-fight, like ice pops that it's frozen and put into like decoration stands. An ice troll is hiding just before you meet Makath as a surprise attack. Makath is in a shelter of basically tapestries to form a tapestry igloo. And inside is furiously going through the stolen hoard of documentation stolen way back when from the Arcane Brotherhood after a dragon attack. Seated at the writing desk is a female tiefling wearing a blazing crimson cloak over tailored furs. Two kobolds stand nearby, glancing nervously between you lot. Tiefling looks up. Have you come to save me or kill me? Not that there would be much difference between the two. Makath is consumed with the writings, almost more than her wanting to escape. She doesn't want to escape without all the writings. If the party seems intent on fighting the dragon, Macath will give them a ring of cold resistance and two arrows of dragon slaying. She knows the general layout, so she can probably draw a map. There are two ways into the lair. If you try and escape the island without facing the dragon, with any prisoners or whatever, the dragon will just take you out as you retreat because it has the air and you don't. The scriptorium. Three shelves stand in this otherwise empty cavern. A number of scrolls, books, parchments and folios are carefully arranged on the shelves, all bearing the markings of magical writing. Characters who can't read magic can't decipher the books. It's a DC 15 wisdom save. You get psychic shocked if you try and read it and can't. There's a lot of damaged scrolls, but there are 10 reasonable ones. Gaseous form, haste, protection from energy, water breathing, Evars of black tentacles, fire shield, wall of fire, hold monster, chain lightning, and disintegrate. So the party will want to pocket those, I guess. There's a drop into the dragon lair. You can't retreat without a big struggle of a climb. Once you're in, you're in. A minimum of two ice trolls will attack first before the dragon reveals himself. Down at the very area of the dragon, you make a DC 10 con save or get a level of exhaustion. The dragon will roar so loudly the whole iceberg vibrates. This calls ice trolls arriving five rounds later. And then the dragon actually can get out of a a side exit if it's reduced to 100 hit points. But I wouldn't cheat the players. I'd let them kill a dragon. In conclusion, Makath could be anybody. It's just a reason to go there. The scorecard for the second council will say, did you drive the dragon away from the lair? Did you rescue Makath and so now you have the arcane brotherhood at the climax? So that's what it boils down to really. Allies and treasure. Right, looking at the stats here, guys. 200 hit points. 
I personally do full hit points here, add all that together. Fly speed of 80 feet, lethal. Plus 11 to perception, Jesus. It's immune to cold damage. Can speak common and draconic. The dragon can move across and climb icy surfaces without needing to make ability checks. Ignores difficult terrain. You can have it blending in on the roof with like one eye watching the players. You can have it behind an ice wall inside the iceberg. You can have it come from underneath. So the three legendary resistances, when it needs to make a save, you can roll the save and succeed it. You can roll it and fail and then say, aha, well, no, I'm going to auto-succeed. That's all it is. It's to drag out the dragon having to save. Players generally know that three legendary resistances is it. So you start with Frightful Presence... Everyone basically makes a DC 14 wisdom save or become frightened, i.e. can't move towards the dragon. You can save out of it at the end of your go. So the multi-attack contains three attacks, one bite and two claws. But generally speaking, dragons don't get into melee unless they really have to. So I would say cold breath, round one. 60 foot cone, obviously go for anyone bunched together, DC 19 con save, or you take 54 average damage, half as much on a successful save. Plus 11 to bite and claw, these are lethal, and your legendary actions are done not on the dragon's turn, but in between player turns. You have three legendary actions to spend every battle round. So throw a tail attack in between some of the players, or throw a wing attack to do extra damage and also the dragon can just fly off it's got loads of movement break its movement up the dragon can swoop down hit somebody and take off again taking that opportunity attack is fine but beware most dragon fights end up with a player on its back it's up to you whether you if it's on its head it can't bite other players off but it can tail attack off and it can probably hand off White dragons love vertical heights, flying up to the ceiling to latch on. Now you are in its lair, so the lair actions do count. On initiative 20, usually that's beginning the beginning of the round, freezing fog will fill areas. The players make DC 10 con saves, or you get another 3D6 cold damage on them. Jagged ice falls from the ceiling the next round and can do 3D6 piercing. The dragon can breathe out an ice wall barricade to slow the players advancing down. So it could be lethal. I I would always genuinely try to kill a player. And once you've done that, maybe back off. You know, the roles and the randomness of the game make that difficult enough, but that creates drama. You can kill a player because they can just, they find a way to bring them back. Depends on your table, you know best. But I hope that helps and I will see you in the next adventure.